Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do a, an introduction to CELPAC. Um, uh, welcome to the training. And uh, I'm just a quick show of hands. How many people have used CELPAC before? All right, so we're starting with some brand new people. Now, uh, how many of people here are familiar with uh, modeling and, and computers and stuff like that? How many people know what a mesh is? Okay, good. So that so we we're not starting off uh, completely uh, from the beginning with everybody. So uh, let me give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. I'll start with the introduction, and uh, it should only take about 15 minutes. And then uh, Ludo will lead the tutorial, uh, which will tell us, which will tell you all about the fundamental uh, basics of how to use CellPack. And uh, then after that, he will be demonstrating uh, CellView and CellFlex, which are two new uh, programs that are being developed by our lab that do amazing things, and I'm sure you'll find them very interesting. And finally, there's a Cell Paint demo and tutorial, which is uh, being developed by Adam there in the back. And uh, that one is also amazing and a lot of fun, uh, so I hope you'll enjoy it. So uh, what is Cell Pack? And uh, I, uh, I came up with this and didn't run it by anybody else, so I, hopefully this is a fair assessment. Um, but the, the fundamental premise is that a cell can be viewed as a collection of molecules. And what we can do is to define what these molecules look like and then give them each a position and a rotation in a three-dimensional volume. And that should be a, a fair ballpark uh, estimate of what the cell looks like. Now, we're going to uh, limit ourselves primarily to proteins in this uh, example. And that's what we have the most experience with. But of course, proteins are critical and uh, important parts of the cell, so that's plenty to work with. And uh, the common way of representing a protein is called a PDB file. Does anybody know what a PDB file is? All right, so that defines the location of all of the atoms. And uh, in an E. coli, for example, there are uh, over 2 million proteins. And if you were to try to identify the position of all of those atoms individually, then it would take up five, over five terabytes worth of space. But in cell pack, we can uh, uh, condense that and show the structures of all of the mo molecules, the, the proteins, and their positions and rotations with a, a much less uh, space, about 14 gigabytes, and also makes it very quick to manipulate them and uh, work with them and also do computations on them. So the beginnings of CellPack were a program called AutoPack. And the idea with AutoPack is you could take arbitrary shapes and pack them into an arbitrary volume and uh, I'd, uh, define concentrations uh, and have them packed together. Now, uh, uh, as most, a lot of people are probably aware, packing is a difficult mathematical problem. And we've decided to approach it in a, in a way using sort of a random algorithm, which I'll explain uh, pretty soon. What AutoPack was talking about is packing into a volume. CellPack takes it to the next level and is able to pack compartments. A uh, compartment contain, is, is defined by a uh, mesh, a, a, usually a DAE file. And there's two parts to it. There's the surface and the interior. And we can pack inside the interior and along the surface. And in most cases, the surface would be treated as a lipid membrane. So lipid, lipid bilayer membrane proteins would go on the surface, and then interior proteins would go in the center. And these can be combined to create vesicles, mitochondria, uh, Golgi, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, uh, all kinds of structures within the cell. In fact, uh, and put it all inside a large mesh, which would be the cell itself. And uh, we hope to be able to identify all of the structures in a cell uh, in this very simple fashion. So the fundamental part of cell pack, the fundamental uh, unit, is the recipe. And a recipe 
uh, has four major parts. There's the first part is called the recipe. Um, and that just has some general information. Then there's a number of options. There's a part called uh, the cytoplasm, which is outside of the structures. These would be the compartments. So there are two compartments in here. And then this box would represent the bounding box, which is the box that you're going to fill with the cytoplasmic ingredients. And then the ingredients are represented in two separate ways with spheres and meshes. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about what this looks like in reality. This is an actual recipe. Um, and it's in a JSON format. This is a text file. And it contains all of the information that is necessary in uh, a recipe. Now, I've had it, I have it collapsed right here. But you can see the four main headers, the recipe, uh, and options, cytoplasm, and compartments. So let's take a look at recipe. The only information in there is the name of the recipe and the version. In the options, we have quite a few more uh, variables. And it's important to be aware you can actually go into this text file and edit it and change your recipe. You don't need to have any sort of graphical interface or special software to do that. Uh, most of these uh, options are things that I have personally not had to use yet. Uh, so I won't go into them, and you probably don't need to know much about them, especially at this point. But the ones that you do need to know about, I'd like to point out, um, the grid size here uh, is called smallest protein size. And uh, I'm afraid, I'm sorry if, it's a, if the naming convention might be a little confusing, but the grid was created because it needs to be small enough to have resolution to pack the smallest proteins. And, the, and that's measured in angstroms. Uh, everything in this, I believe, is measured in angstroms. So uh, the grid size here would be uh, 10 angstroms. So each one of the grid points would be 10 angstroms apart. And I'll, I'll talk to you about the grid in a second. Uh, the bounding box, which we, which we uh, saw in the last slide, is that box which defines the overall volume that you're dealing with. And uh, those are the two important things that you're going to find in the options. Now, let's look at the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm could be considered a, a separate, uh, just a compartment in itself. Um, but in uh, cell pack, it's got a special status as basically everything that's not in a compartment. And uh, ingredients is the only section in that. And you can have any number of ingredients in there. And here we just call them ingredient one, two, and three. And then we can open them up and take a look at what the uh, settings are for these ingredients. Now, again, there are a lot of settings here that are probably not something that you're going to have to worry about immediately, uh, many of them which I still have never used. But the ones that are important, I am pointing out. Molarity, that's, of course, the concentration of the ingredient in the compartment, uh, and in this case, in the cytoplasm. And uh, the mesh file, right now below it, is the location in the computer of the mesh file that represents that ingredient. So is there a way to take the PDB and create meshes from it? Yes. And we're going to, uh, I, I can't remember if we're doing that today. Uh, but EPMV does it. Um, uh, automatically. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I think we'll probably get to that. Um, I mean, hopefully, because then we won't be able to pack anything into it, right? Well, yeah, pu the, the uh, program, AutoPack, when you download it, comes along with EPMV, which is a separate program. And EPMV allows you to enter in the PDB ID of anything in the PDB, and it will download it and make a, a mesh out of it for you. Now, uh, the second the thing, the third thing we're going to talk about here is the sphere tree. And that's the representation of the ingredient in, in the form of a number of spheres. 
And we use that because it's a very simple format. Instead of uh, a mesh, which could be hundreds of points, a uh, sphere tree is usually like seven or eight. So uh, it makes it very easy to pack and very fast. And uh, the positions of all of those spheres are listed here. For this particular ingredient, there is only one sphere, and it's, it is centered at the origin. So uh, another thing is jitter max. And that will tell you how much the ingredients are going to be able to move in three-dimensional space, x, y, and z axes. And in this case, that's 1, 1, and 1 uh, means they can move a full grid unit in any of those dimensions. Encapsulating radius is basically the radius of a sphere that would encapsulate the entire ingredient. And that's a, that's a useful number for making a lot of uh, simple lower level com uh, calculations. The name of the ingredient, of course, is important. And uh, the principal vector is something that you'll find on uh, a lot of ingredients. I'm not sure if you've seen all of them, but um, yeah, it, I think it's in all of them. And that's used for aligning the ingredient to the surface of a compartment that, that tells you which direction is out. The collision detection method, there's three basic collision detecting methods, which uh, we will talk about. Well, I don't know if we're going to talk about them in too much detail. Uh, the one we're going to be using today uh, is jitter. That's the basic one. And uh, I'll explain how that works in a bit. But uh, that's something that you can change in this menu. And then you've got the radii of the spheres in the sphere tree and the name of the mesh. And that's it. That's what you've got in your ingredient that, uh, as far as I know, will be useful. Um, I have a quick question about the, uh, the, was it the sphere tree, the one with the positions of all the spheres? Yeah. Is that just the positions of all the spheres within the mesh? So no, no. Like there's two separate representations of the ingredient. There's the sphere tree representation and the mesh representation. Uh -huh. So the sphere tree representation has uh, the, the positions of the centers of however many spheres are in that representation. Oh, so you can actually place the molecules within the geometry, within the bounding uh, mesh. Like, yeah, but you, you, you definitely with doing the, the tutorial on this, like, you can just talk from a GDP5. But it all. has nothing to do with the actual positions of the particles in the, in the Right, that's right. Yeah. It's just a representation that we can use to do quick packing. Got it. Okay. And, uh, huh? Well, like one sphere tree, or would that have like one sphere tree for every person? Uh, it, it, it depends on how you are identifying it. Uh, actually, an organelle could be considered a single ingredient and could have a, its own sphere tree. So a vesicle could have a sphere tree with one sphere, and then that could be used to pack inside the larger context of the cytoplasm, even though inside of it, it's got a ton of proteins which, with their own sphere trees. It just makes the computation a lot simpler. Uh, now, I don't know if how many of you are familiar with JSON format, but uh, it's very straightforward here. And uh, you just got to be very careful with it. If you're editing in here, if you misplace uh, anything, you have a colon or a comma, this has tripped me up many times, the whole thing's going to fail. So uh, just be careful about that. <laughs> 